about tonight. It's the Best of the Bay Awards from a Creative Loaf, and it's here in the St. Pete Coliseum. Um, we just got here not too long ago. We see a lot of booths that we're looking forward to get to. We see a couple of art booths and some wine, and we saw a beer one back there and some tequila. Yeah. So. So yeah. Well, right now we're doing the Tampa Bay Awards, so there are so many different categories from designers to martinis to restaurants, everything you can imagine. And I'm here for one of the designers for the Dunedin Fine Arts Center Wearable Art Show X. And she's uh, an amazing designer. She makes wonderful creations out of everyday items. Today is a, a great event. It celebrates Tampa Bay's best of the best in services and businesses and I'm here as a guest from the Dunedin Art Center as one of the designers from the Wearable Art uh, 10 show. Okay, let's get to the first award. We're going to start right up at the top with our best city. This is a Reader's Poll Award. Uh, the best city, you have the, you have the choice between uh, St. Petersburg, Tampa and Clearwater. So we'll start by getting you to vote. What you vote on, I'm afraid, won't have any impact on what the result of the award is, but still, how many people would like to pick Clearwater as the best city? It's a very nice place you should visit. How many people would like to pick Tampa as the best city? I think you want to do the thing with the applause meter. Okay, let's hear that again. How many people would like to pick Tampa as the best city? How many people would like to pick St. Petersburg as the best city? Air shattering. I think uh, you you probably be happy with the result here because Heidi. The winner is St. Pete. Okay, so I'd like to call the Deputy Mayor of St. Petersburg up to the stage if she is here. And, ah, there she is, Dr. Kanika Tavalev, our Deputy Mayor. And we have a plaque for you.
Ministry. Uh, thank you for joining us on this special day today. In a few minutes, you're going to experience an incredible exhibit uh, that not only sets the stage for the birth and growth of Florida, but also for the birth of our nation. Uh, there's some, some key people uh, that were instrumental in, in bringing this exhibit here that we'd like to thank today. Uh, the first one being Susan Henry and the Huff Family Foundation, for without them, this wouldn't be possible. The Tampa Bay Times, one of our media partners, um, Manuel Mortari and the staff from the Acción Cultural Española. God, I hope I got that right. <laughs> the museum's board of directors for, for their, uh, their support in bringing this here as well. And last but not least, the guys that are all hiding over there, uh, Nevin Sittler, James Parrish, Levi Harris, and the rest of the museum, staff that uh, made history themselves by transforming our main gallery into colonial Florida in a very short period of time. Um, now I want to introduce someone who flew in from Spain for this opening, uh, the director of the Acción Cultural Española, Senor Jorge Sobrero. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Rui. Thank you very much also to the uh, president of the board of directors of the museum. We are actually very, very pleased to have this exhibition here in, in St. Petersburg. I think it is a very interesting exhibition, very well uh, narrated period of the history of this area of the country. Uh, thanks to our curator, Dr. Michael Francis, who has done an extraordinary job uh, narrating a complex, a complex uh, history in a very attractive way. So I hope that you enjoy it. It's uh, very interactive. It has lots of interesting things. And it's also uh, this mystification, <laughs> I don't know if I said that right in English, of certain things, uh, Fountain of Youth, etc., which will be interesting <laughs> to uh, people in the county and in the city. So thank you very much, Rui, and uh, thank you for being here today. So um, all, all the good things uh, that the Fountain of Youth to me represents. So um, uh, first of all, I'm just very excited to have this in our community. Uh, the Spanish were the first tourists of Florida, and uh, tourism is very important to us in this community, and we continue to say there is an impact. Uh, tourism matters to our community. Uh, visitors matter to the experience of St. Pete, so we're hoping this will drive more folks. We hope our residents uh, throughout the Pinellas County and Tampa Bay area come out and understand and learn uh, the, hist the great history we have between Spain and uh, Florida, and especially St. Petersburg. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, we're excited to see the exhibit. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Museum of History, St. Petersburg's Museum of History. It's been here for over 90 years, and we're awfully happy, happy to have this uh, uh, outstanding exhibit, and we're very happy to have you here. Um, I think it's my pleasure uh, at this time uh, to introduce a representative from the city, uh, Jessica Eilerman. Good morning. Uh, I have a proclamation of the city of St. Petersburg I would like to share with you all today. Whereas more than 500 years ago, explorer Ponce de Leon landed on a sunny, sandy beach he believed to be another Caribbean island. And whereas he named this flower-covered, enchanted land La Florida, and whereas the arrival of explorers like Ponce de Leon began a history of complex and often tragic interactions between Europeans, Africans, and Indians. And whereas these exchanges in part remain part of the legacy, which is modern Florida today, and whereas the St. Petersburg Museum of History and the city of St. Petersburg are proud to host Imagining La Florida, an exhibition where <clears throat> excuse me, which offers a new perspective on the rich and often forgotten history of Florida. Now, therefore, I, Rick Kreisman, Mayor of the City of St. Petersburg, do hereby proclaim today, September 16, 2014, as Imagining La Florida Day in St. Petersburg, and I encourage all residents to observe this day and acknowledge those relentless early explorers of America.
Thanks so much for coming. I, I'm not sure I want to be known as the guy who ruined the fountain of youth. Uh, I'm going to be run out of town, and uh, Florida will no longer be a home. Uh, this was a joint collaborative effort from the very beginning, and I just want to thank everyone involved. There were dozens of people who made this happen, uh, including the remarkably talented people at Acción Cultural Española and Grupo Absolute, Carmen Bueno, some of the finest museum designers who can translate the messy details of a neurotic historian into an, uh, an exciting, interactive, and accessible uh, exhibit uh, like this one is. And, and we were faced with a number of interesting challenges. How do you make an exhibit for this early Florida period where we have very few original paintings, buildings that still exist uh, from this early period. The oldest standing structure in Florida from the Spanish period is the Castillo in St. Augustine. And that dates to more than a century after this exhibit effectively comes to an end. So how do you do it? How do you animate it? How do you make it exciting? And how do you tell a story of Africans, Indians, and Europeans who helped forge uh, this world in the 16th century, who helped create communities and, uh, and establish an early European uh, foothold in what becomes uh, the United States of America. So we invite you to look at this imaginary world through the lens of some interactive exhibits, uh, highlighting some of the forgotten figures. And I mentioned last night when we opened the exhibit that I often begin my class in early Florida history by asking my students to pull out a piece of paper and write down the 50 most influential Floridians who lived here between 1513 and 1763. And they say, pardon, 50? I said, 40, 30? 20, 10, uh, the record to date is six. Uh, they can't name any women who were here. Uh, what about uh, Africans who took part? And so we hope that this exhibit would highlight uh, the, uh, the individuals uh, from different backgrounds who uh, created uh, this place, La Florida, uh, which in the 16th century extended from the Tortugas to the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. So the next time you meet anyone from Virginia, uh, from New England, congratulate them for being an early Floridian. So welcome to the exhibit. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Three, two, one, go. Yeah.